Hey, welcome back for another week of This Week in the 80s. My name is Paul. I am your host. Before you do anything, click that subscribe button at the bottom so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on around here. This week, we're going to cover the third week in March. There's awesome movies. There's That's not true at all. The movies are terrible. You're not going to believe what was number one. The music is fantastic, and the television shows are quality. News, well, the news is always the same, but I'll cover that anyway. Stick around. We're going to get started right now. The third week in March in 1988 had two networks that were doing a fantastic job and one that could not have possibly done worse. It was a night of awesome shows for younger people, awesome shows for the old people, and uh, and then we'll talk about CVS in a minute. Let's start out with the shows for the old people. At 8 o'clock on Tuesday, March 22nd, 1988, you're watching Matlock if you are 60 or older. Everyone loved Matlock when they uh, grew the white hair like we're all getting now, right? That ran from eight to nine. Uh, up against that on ABC, what the rest of us were watching, us cool 80s kids, eight o'clock, ABC, who's the boss, right? Tony Maselli and the gang, everyone loved that show, followed by The Wonder Years. Like, imagine that back to back. What a great night to watch television. Uh, then CBS. So ABC's got Matlock. ABC, who's the boss in The Wonder Years? CBS, <laughs> they give us a show called Trial and Error at eight o'clock. What is trial and error, you ask? Not many people know. They, uh, let's see, they recorded eight shows and uh, five of them didn't even air. Trial and Error was a Paul Rodriguez vehicle that was uh, produced by Tommy Chong. The cool thing about it is that episode two had a breakthrough. The bellboy was the first paying gig for Brad Pitt. That's what it's famous for. Brad Pitt's first paying gig was as a bellboy on a show that, they seriously aired three episodes and got and it got canceled. So that was just junk. Uh, obviously not taking down the Wonder Years. At 8.30, they had My Sister Sam. Now, My Sister Sam was supposed to be pretty good. It had Pam Dauber. Everyone loves Pam Dauber. You remember her from Mork and Mindy, and she was supposed to be the next big star. Uh, unfortunately, this show also did not do so great. Uh, they, they did record 44 episodes. Uh, they only aired 32 of them. Uh, they had it on. Then they canceled it. And everyone wrote letters saying, no, no, we love that show. So they decided, all right, fine, we'll put it back on the air. And they did. And it bombed again. So then they canceled it. So no luck for my sister, Sam, or trial and error at the 8 and 8.30 slot for the good folks at CBS. Here comes 9 o'clock. And NBC continues on with their still pandering to the old folks in the heat of the night. Right. The Carol O'Connor cop show. Uh, my grandmother used to love it. Uh, I, of course, never watched it uh, at... Nine o'clock on ABC, good moonlighting. Moonlighting with Bruce Willis, Sybil Shepard. Everyone loved that show. Uh, it was fun. It was interesting. And Bruce Willis uh, hadn't become, well, what he is today. So that was their nine o'clock offering as well. CBS, of course, continued to just absolutely put the worst stuff you've ever heard of on television, uh, starting out with a show called Coming of Age. Haven't heard of it? It was on for two seasons, but they only recorded 15 episodes of that. Four of them remain on there. They only put 11 of them on TV. Nobody watched it. Nobody cared. You know who was in it? Nobody. Paul Dooley, Phyllis Newman, Alan Young, and others. Not a clue. Sorry for those of you who loved a Coming of Age, but then again, not sorry to anyone because that show didn't even have any fans. At 9.30, Moonlighting and the Heat of the Night are still showing on ABC and NBC. On CBS, we had Frank's Place. Now, Frank's Place should have done all right. It had uh, Tim Reed, the uh, Venus flytrap from WKRP. Love Venus flytrap from WKRP. Unfortunately for uh, Frank's Place, it also just could not get going. It did have a great theme song, though. Uh, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans by uh, Louis Armstrong? That's probably the highlight of the show. Louis Armstrong's awesome. Um, but in uh, the rest of the offerings that they have are just, just not going to cut it. Come 10 o'clock, NBC puts on Crime Story. ABC, 30-something, which I probably should have watched when I was 30-something. Now I'm not 30-something. Do they have a show called 40-something? Someone should work on that. And CBS finally dug themselves out with Cagney and Lacey. Uh, I didn't watch any of those shows because on uh, March 22nd, 1988, at 10 o'clock, I was in bed, right? But... Some people were watching them. Um, the top shows, of course, 30 something was number one, Crime Story number two, and Cagney and Lacey number three. So they at least, CBS at least 
got themselves a little bit put back together for that. But man, there's no excuses for what they did between uh, between eight and ten. Those shows are terrible. But the rest of the shows were good. Imagine that. Who's the boss followed by the Wonder Years? I think you look forward to that all week. 80s television. Over in the news on uh, March 22nd of 1988. Listen, the news is always the same. I'm going to say it a million times, but nothing ever changes. It's the same stuff. You know, it's the civil rights bill. Um, campaign 88, politics in the news. It was a report on Michael Dukakis. That was, that was bad. Uh, there was liability insurance. AIDS was a big deal back then. Panama and Manuel Noriega. Stock market report, always important. And our postal rates made the news in 1988. How much a stamp was in 1988? It was uh, 22 cents, less than a quarter. Now you need more than two quarters just to send a letter to your neighbor. Just email them. It'll save you a couple of bucks. Uh, the Iran-Iraq war was going on, chemical warfare problems, war in the Persian Gulf, same stuff, Burma. Uh, Desmond Tutu made the news down in South Africa. There, of course, as there always is, a report on U.S. USSR relations. Gorbachev was still running uh, the show over there. This was before Reagan slapped him around. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that. That happened later. That was in 1988. Um, you know, there was a, a, a problem in Spain and baseball spring trainings were uh, making the news. Like it's always the same thing. No matter where we go, commercials, the commercials that were on during the news, I, it's pretty cool it's on our website. I got that tells me this stuff. Uh, John Deere Lawn uh, Lawnmowers. Taster's Choice, Prunes, Prunes made it. Prunes is in the, is in the ads. Uh, prunes did not catch on like they had hoped, I don't think. Uh, windows and Doors, um, Konica Copiers was on the, uh, on the news. And uh, Ford was also big on it. The Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais was on it as well. And Milk of Magnesia because your grandmother was probably watching the news instead of you. Uh, that was on the nightly news. Remember, it used to come on at 6.30. I think it still does, but who the hell watches that? Certainly not me. In music news, in March, third week of March, 1988, there wasn't really all that much going on for releases. The Talking Heads released Naked, which was a, a decent album. But other than that, the Pixies put something out, and uh, that's really about it. But the charts, of course, were awesome. We're just going to look at the top 20. A lot of things were just outside the top 20 that were great as well. But again, when I'm going over this picture, just listening to the radio, this is what was on at the time. Uh, number 20 on the list, breaking into the top 20, uh, Terrence Trent Darby's Wishing Well. The sick of Monterey. Uh, before the, uh, 19, Where the Broken Hearts Go by Whitney Houston. 18, Some Kind of Lover with Jody Watley. 17, Cher was still on the radio. I know you know, I can't stand Cher's music. I know a lot of people love it, but like that is just, I'd rather listen to Static or Silence. Uh, number 16, Devil Inside by NXS off the uh, the Kick album, one of my favorite of all time. Uh, number 15, Sting with Be Still My Broken Hot. 14, Girlfriend by Pebbles. 13, Michael Bolton. Guys, Michael Bolton was on the radio like, all the time and we liked it. Sitting on the dog of the bay. Uh, the Jets with Rock to You, number 11, Hysteria. Def Leppard still cranking them out on the charts. That was awesome. Let's look at the top 10. Number 10, Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, Billy Ocean. Remember that video? It was pretty fun. I mean, that's one of those songs that you never seek it out, but when it's on, you're kind of singing along with it. Like, you know, that's cool. Uh, Keith Sweat was on the list at number nine. I want her. Number eight, David Lee Roth, the solo album uh, with Just Like Paradise. That's a fun tune. Debbie Gibson was still getting it done out of the blue. She's in number seven. Number six, my buddy, my friend and yours, Patrick Swayze with She's Like the Wind. Ah, oh, Patrick Swayze, he was just awesome in everything he did. And you know what? As much as we pick on that song, I know every word, and you're a liar if you say you don't. Number five, Richard Marks with all the cheese and music you can have. Endless Summer Nights, Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror uh, was number four. That shot up to number one in a couple of weeks. Number three, George Michael's father figure. Number two, Belinda Carlisle. Former Go-Go's front woman, Belinda Carlisle, I Get Weak. And the number one song that just encapsulates the entire week and everything you've been waiting for and everything you love in life, the number one song. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm just going to read the lyrics and I'm going to leave it at that. Second verse. We've known each other for so long. Your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. 
Inside, we both know what's been going on. We know the game and we're going to play it. If you ask me how I'm feeling, don't tell me you're too blind to see. I'm never going to give you up. So the first few uh, months in 1988 were not the best for movies. Obviously, they're going to release a lot of good stuff at the end of the year to drive for all for Christmas and all that. Right after Christmas in 1987, we had uh, Good Morning Vietnam come out and it stayed at the top all the way to the third week of March. Now, what knocked it off? A juggernaut, folks, a superstar movie that I'm sure you've seen a thousand times. And it's probably in your top 10 of the greatest movies of all time as well. It was, and I'm not joking, Police Academy 5, Assignment Miami Beach. What the hell? Right, so there was no no Steve Gutenberg. Mahoney didn't even make it. It was driven by all the secondary characters that we know and love. Like, everybody loves Bubba Smith as Hightower and Tackleberry and Michael Winslow as the dude that makes all the sounds. But that's your number one? Other movies came out as well, like uh, Little Nikita came out. That was Sidney Portier and uh, River Phoenix. Unfortunately, the movie was crap, so nobody really wanted to go see that. Assignment Miami Beach, Police Academy 5, was, uh, was the top of the pile for movies. And that's literally the only interesting thing that happened for movies at that time. Terrible. That's going to do it for me for this week in the 80s, the third week of March, 1988. Don't forget to click the subscribe button at the bottom so you can be up to date when new uh, videos come out. Don't forget to find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as well. And uh, don't forget to click that link down at the bottom and buy me a cup of coffee. I'm working hard for you. I need some coffee. Hook me up, would you? Big shout out to my friends over at the Cup to Cup podcast for uh, consistently doing an awesome job and helped me with a little bit of marketing as well. Uh, if you love the, the intro and the outro that I have for this video, that was made by my friend Jason Payne from the Cup to Cup podcast. He can make yours too for just a small donation. Everybody have a fantastic week. I will see you next week for more This Week in the 80s. Stay rad, y'all.